Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Let's take up the analysis of today's The Hindu newspaper. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has said that as of now, no cases of community transmission of coronavirus has been recorded in the country. This claim of the Indian government has come even as the number of cases have increased quite rapidly over the last couple of days. The total number of cases in India has already crossed the 300 mark and along with this, a few positive cases have been reported where the patient has no travel history to an affected region or the patient has had no direct contact with any other infected person. The occurrence of such cases has led few experts to believe that community transmission might have already begun in India, but the government has not been able to confirm community transmission due to the flawed testing strategy that has been adopted by the Indian Council of Medical Research. So due to the rising number of such cases with no travel history and no established contact with an infected person, the ICMR has decided to revise its testing strategy. See the test that is currently being used to confirm the presence of sars coronavirus 2 is the RT-PCR test. It stands for Real-Time Reverse Transcriptase Polymerase Chain Reaction. Under this test, swab samples of the suspected patient is taken from the nose and the back of the throat and these samples are sent to the nearest testing centre and as well as the National Institute of Virology in Pune. At these testing centres, the samples are tested by using a diagnostic test kit that makes use of few chemical reagents to confirm the presence of specific DNA-based sequences that are unique to the sars coronavirus 2 the presence of these specific DNA bases confirms the infection and the person is said to be a positive case of COVID-19. In India, these tests are being carried out in around 79 government labs under the supervision of the Indian Council of Medical Research through the Integrated Disease Surveillance Program. Since the outbreak began in India, the focus of ICMR has been to identify imported cases and cases of local transmission. So until now, testing was limited to travellers who were coming from affected countries and to those who have come in direct contact with these imported cases, provided if they were displaying symptoms. So if a traveller from an affected country was asymptomatic, or if the family members of an imported case were asymptomatic, or if the healthcare workers treating an imported case were asymptomatic, then they were not being tested and instead they were only being advised to subject themselves to home quarantine for a period of 14 days. These asymptomatic travellers and high-risk contacts would be tested only if they started displaying symptoms. So experts and even the WHO were of the opinion that such narrow and limited testing won't be able to pick out the occurrence of community transmission. The WHO has repeatedly advocated that all countries should take up aggressive testing in order to prevent community transmission from occurring and it has even cited the example of South Korea which has successfully made use of widespread testing to contain the spread of community transmission. But the reason why India has limited testing to these cases is because of shortage of testing kits. The ICMR has said that it had to limit testing to these narrow cases in order to ensure that sufficient test kits would be available if India were to enter the third stage of transmission, which is community transmission. But experts have pointed out that this strategy could be counterproductive because failure to detect the beginning of community transmission would result in an exponential growth in the number of cases, which could easily overwhelm the healthcare system. But as the number of cases have begun to rise and as the likelihood of community transmission has increased, the Indian Council of Medical Research has finally decided to revise its testing strategy. So apart from testing these imported cases and high-risk contacts who are displaying symptoms, the ICMR has decided to test all hospitalized patients who have been suffering from severe respiratory illness, fever, cough and shortness of breath. Apart from this category, all direct and high-risk contacts such as family members and healthcare workers who have been asymptomatic would also be tested once between day 5 and day 14 of their contact with an infected patient. Then in order to protect healthcare workers 
such as doctors and nurses who are at the front line of this fight against COVID-19, all symptomatic healthcare workers would also be tested henceforth. Then in order to expand the number of testing centers and ensure the availability of adequate testing kits, the government has decided to rope in private testing labs as well. But the prices for testing at private labs have been capped at 4,500 rupees by the government. Because each RT-PCR test costs around 4,500 rupees and since all the tests were being carried out only in government labs, this cost was being borne by the government. But now that it has decided to rope in the private sector, the prices have been capped at 4,500 rupees by the government. So this revised testing strategy is expected to expand the scope of testing and significantly increase the number of tests that are being carried out. So as a result, we can expect a significant increase in the number of positive cases and it might even provide evidence to prove whether community transmission has already begun or not. Now let us take up this article from page number 12, which evaluates the reasons behind the tragedy that is unfolding in Italy. See, according to latest reports, Italy has reported a total of 53,000 plus cases of COVID-19. Each day, Italy has been witnessing around 6,000 plus cases and nearly 5,000 people have already been killed with a very high fatality rate of around 9%. The fatality rate being reported in Italy is considerably high because in comparison, the fatality rate in China was hardly around 3-4%. to 4%. So this enormous human tragedy has unfolded in Italy in just around 50 days and this article is trying to evaluate the reasons behind it. See the outbreak initially began in the northern parts of Italy in the Lombardy region. This region is industrialized and urbanized and the northern parts of Italy happens to be more developed than the southern parts of Italy. So as a result there has been a close connection between China and the northern parts of Italy and a number of Chinese investors have invested in the industries and factories that are located in the Lombardy region of Northern Italy. So it is this connection which brought the virus from China and triggered an outbreak in Northern Italy. But in today's globalized world, such an outbreak could have actually occurred in any other country. In fact, even before Italy, other countries such as Singapore, South Korea, Japan, they witnessed an earlier outbreak due to their close Chinese connection. But none of these countries have gone through a tragedy that Italy is currently going through. And one of the prime reasons happens to be the high median age of Italy's population. Amongst all the European countries, Italy has one of the highest median age, which stands at around 45.4 years. And nearly 25% of Italy's population is above the age of 60 years. Our experience with coronavirus has already shown that old age people are highly vulnerable and the fatality rate is extremely high amongst them. And since old age people suffer from a number of comorbid conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, etc. It further increases their vulnerability and fatality rate. So this has been one of the primary reasons behind the exponential increase in the number of cases and deaths that Italy has seen. But if you consider the high median age of Italy as one of the primary reasons behind this tragedy, then the case of Japan is quite interesting. Because Japan has a higher median age than Italy and it has more number of old people. And as compared to Italy's median age of 45.4 years, Japan's median age is 47.3 years. So despite having a higher median age than Italy and despite reporting the outbreak earlier than Italy, the number of cases and the total number of deaths have been surprisingly well contained in Japan. So this example from Japan shows that high median age alone cannot be the primary reason behind this tragedy in Italy. So apart from its high median age, the other reason which has contributed to this disaster in Italy was its slow initial response. See Italy reported its initial cases in early Feb and these cases occurred around 10 days before they were reported in other European countries such as Germany, Spain, France, etc. But despite having seen the devastation that COVID-19 was causing in China, Italy was very slow to respond in the initial phase. By the second and third week of Feb, Italy started witnessing a moderate growth in the number of cases 
and despite this, Italy responded with partial lockdowns and partial restrictions. These incomplete measures failed to flatten the exponential curve that we have come to see in the case of COVID-19. So due to this failure in initial response, by the last week of Feb and the first week of March, we started witnessing an exponential increase in the number of cases. And this problem was further complicated by inadequate testing and the shortage of testing kits. So in just a matter of few weeks, the number of cases exploded and this ended up saturating the sophisticated healthcare system of Italy. Due to the increasing number of severe cases amongst the older population, the demand for intensive care and ventilators started increasing. This placed a lot of strain on Italy's healthcare system and the shortage of these critical care facilities forced the doctors to implement wartime practices where the doctors had to choose between saving young patients who had a higher chance of survival or to save older patients with comorbid conditions who had a very low chance of survival. So this unfortunate choice led the doctors to reject ventilator support to older patients and this has been one of the key contributors to the high fatality rate that has been seen in Italy. But apart from all these factors, there is also an element of bad luck behind this tragedy in Italy. Because irrespective of a country's median age, this tragedy could have occurred in any other country or it might still occur in any other country. So the lesson for other countries is that partial lockdowns and partial measures will not help in flattening the curve. And inadequate testing will result in the under-reporting of cases and the country won't be able to contain the spread of community transmission. So this tragic experience of Italy should come as a lesson for every other country that is still dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. Next, on page number 14, we have an article related to the development of a vaccine for COVID-19. But we have already covered this topic in detail on the 13th of March. Next, on page number 5, we have an article related to the mass nesting of olive ridley turtles at the Rushikulia coast in Odessa. But we have already covered this topic in detail on the 24th of Feb. So kindly go back and watch these videos and go through these articles once. Now let's take up an article from page number 10. The Union Cabinet has approved two major schemes for the promotion of India's domestic pharmaceutical industry. The Union Cabinet has approved a financial assistance of around 3000 crore rupees for promoting the establishment of bulk drug parks across the country. These bulk drug parks are expected to come up over the next five years and it will help in the establishment of common infrastructure which can be used by multiple drug manufacturers. In order to promote the domestic manufacturing of drugs, under this scheme, common infrastructure such as solvent recovery plants, distillation plants, power and steam facilities, effluent treatment plants, etc. would be set up. These common facilities that would be located in a bulk drug park could be shared by a number of drug manufacturers. Apart from this, the Union Cabinet has also approved the Production Linked Incentive Scheme with a financial assistance of around 6,940 crore rupees. Under this scheme, a production-based incentive is provided to the domestic pharmaceutical industries that manufacture active pharmaceutical ingredients and critical drug intermediates. APIs and critical drug intermediates are the key ingredients in a drug and it is used as a raw material in the manufacture of a number of essential drugs. Currently, India imports most of these key ingredients and hence it is excessively dependent on other countries. So whenever the supply of these key ingredients is affected in the exporting country, it directly affects the manufacturing of essential drugs in India. Take for example, the impact of coronavirus outbreak on China's pharmaceutical industry. China is one of the leading producers of active pharmaceutical ingredients. And India happens to be one of the largest importers of APIs from China. The imposition of shutdowns in China affected the production and export of APIs to India and it is threatening to affect the manufacturing of essential drugs in India. So this scheme will incentivize the domestic pharmaceutical industry in India to produce these key ingredients and reduce India's dependency on foreign countries. And on the other hand, 
the bulk drug park scheme will bring down the cost of production by providing common facilities and shared infrastructure to domestic drug manufacturers. So both the schemes have been designed to promote the domestic manufacturing of key pharmaceutical ingredients and essential drugs and hence it is expected to create thousands of employment opportunities. Now let's take up the next article. The union cabinet has approved the inclusion of Ayush Health and Wellness Center under the National Ayush Mission. See currently the Ayush Health and Wellness Centers are a part of Ayushman Bharat and the cabinet has approved the inclusion of this component of Ayushman Bharat under the National Ayush Mission. This decision will help in fulfilling one of the objectives of the National Health Policy of 2017 which is to mainstream alternate systems of medicine under the Ayush domain such as Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Yunani, Siddha, Sova Rikpa and Homeopathy. Over the next five years, Ayush health and wellness centers would be set up across the country under the National Ayush Mission and it will help in promoting preventive, promotive, curative, rehabilitative and palliative health care. This focus on preventive health care will promote self-care amongst the masses and it will reduce the health burden caused by lifestyle related disorders. The focus on preventive health care under Ayush will also help in reducing the out-of-pocket expenditure and it will also provide an informed choice to those who prefer such alternate systems of medicine. Now let's take up the next article which refers to a joint maritime patrol that has been conducted by India and France. Both the countries have carried out a joint maritime patrol near the Reunion Island which is an overseas territory of France located in the Indian Ocean. This small island belonging to France is located between Madagascar and Mauritius. During this maritime patrol, the Indian Navy had deployed the P-8I Poseidon aircraft that India has acquired from the United States, which is primarily used for anti-submarine warfare. Apart from this, the P-8I can also be used for maritime reconnaissance and intelligence gathering. In the past, India has conducted such joint maritime patrols in the Indian Ocean region with friendly countries in the neighborhood such as Sri Lanka, Maldives, Bangladesh, Myanmar and even Mauritius and Madagascar. But this is the first time that India has conducted such a joint maritime patrol with a major power such as France in the Indian Ocean region. France has also become the first country to deploy a liaison officer at the Information Fusion Center for the Indian Ocean region that is operated by the Indian Navy. The Information Fusion Center of the Indian Navy that is located in the national capital collates radar information that is collected from the coastal surveillance radars that India has set up along its coastline and as well as in friendly countries such as Sri Lanka, Seychelles, Mauritius etc. and it provides a complete picture of maritime traffic in the Indian Ocean region. This center helps in promoting India's maritime domain awareness in the Indian Ocean region and France has become the first country to deploy a liaison officer at the IFC center. This joint maritime patrol also indicates the growing strategic closeness between India and France. See France is already providing a number of key defense equipment to India such as the Scorpion submarines, the Rafale fighter jets etc. Both the countries have also signed the logistics exchange agreement in order to provide for refueling and resupplies to the armed forces of both the countries. So this joint maritime patrol that has been held near the Reunion Island takes forward the strategic relationship between the two countries. Now let us take up the practice questions. Which of the following statements are correct? Gujarat is the largest cotton producing state followed by Maharashtra. Minimum support price or MSP is not provided for raw cotton. The Cotton Corporation of India Limited is responsible for procurement and export of cotton and it is under the Ministry of Agriculture. Amongst the given statements, both the second and the third statements are incorrect because MSP is provided for cotton as well. And the Cotton Corporation of India is not under the Ministry of Agriculture, it is under the Ministry of Textiles. So the correct answer is option A, one only. This question has been asked 
because according to this article on page number 10, the central government has agreed to reimburse the Cotton Corporation of India and the Maharashtra government for procuring cotton from farmers at MSP prices. And you can see over here that the Commission for Agricultural Costs and Prices, which recommends MSPs to the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs, covers around 23 crops. This includes 7 cereals, 5 pulses, 7 types of oil seeds and 4 commercial crops including cotton. And the MSP provided for sugarcane is referred to as FRP or fair and remunerative price. Now let's take up the next practice question. Which of the following steps are involved in the process of money laundering? Is it placement or layering or integration or stashing? The correct answer is option A, 1, 2 and 3. See money laundering is the process through which black money that is generated from illegal activities is converted into white money. So illegal income that is generated through activities such as tax fraud, drug trafficking, corruption etc. is converted into white money through three stages involved in the money laundering process. This includes placement, layering and integration. Under placement, the proceeds of illegal activities is introduced into the financial system. Then under layering, complex financial transactions are carried out in order to conceal the criminal origin of this money. Then finally under integration, black money is introduced into the financial system by creating a legal origin for it. This question was asked because according to this article on page number 10, a former minister of the government of Jharkhand has been convicted on the charges of money laundering under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Now let's take up the next practice question. Viral protease is an enzyme that processes proteins critical to virus development. An antiviral that blocks this enzyme effectively prevents the virus from replicating. Hence, such an inhibitor will be effective against the novel coronavirus. Both the statements are correct. Option C is the right answer. This question has been asked because we have a related article on page number 15. This article refers to a study that was recently published in the Science Journal. According to this study, the development and replication of a virus is regulated by an enzyme known as virus protease. So the study has shown that if you develop an antiviral drug that can block this enzyme, then it can inhibit the development and replication of the virus and such an antiviral drug can be effective against the novel coronavirus as well. Now let's take up the next practice question. Which of the following statements are correct? Isolated samples of the virus are not needed to develop a mRNA vaccine. The genome sequence of the virus is sufficient to produce the messenger RNA synthetically which are needed to develop the mRNA vaccine. Both the statements are correct. Option C is the right answer. This question has been asked because we have a related article on page number 15. See there are two ways in which a vaccine can be developed against a virus. In traditional vaccines, the virus itself is used or a part of its protein structure is used in an inactivated form in order to trigger our immune system. So in order to develop such vaccines, first you need to isolate the virus and the virus sample would be needed. But of late, a new category of vaccines have come up known as mRNA vaccines or messenger RNA vaccines. These vaccines are developed by synthetically producing the mRNA of the virus in a lab just by using its genome sequence. So for the development of mRNA vaccines, we don't need the isolated sample of the virus and instead we just require its genome sequence. One such mRNA vaccine known as mRNA1273 has been developed to act against the SARS coronavirus 2. This mRNA vaccine has been developed by the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations and this holds the potential to provide us immunity against COVID-19. And the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations is a global initiative involving NGOs, research institutions and governments. Even India is a member of this coalition. Now let's take up a practice question from the 2017 prelims paper. In India, markets in agricultural products are regulated under the Agricultural Produce Market Committee Act enacted by the states. Option B is the right answer. Finally, 
let's take up a couple of mains practice questions. The first question, aggressive and widespread testing is said to be the key to contain the spread of novel coronavirus. In this context, explain the testing strategy adopted by India. The second question, amongst all the countries affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, why is Italy the worst hit? So kindly write an answer to these questions and post them in the comment section below. This concludes our discussion for the day. Thanks for watching.